Since the first day that I moved out of the city, one of the biggest things I wanted to photograph was the ruby-throated hummingbird. And by big, I mean on my list of desires, because they are small. But I've been thwarted by this bird over and over again. And so far it's been a lot of sitting watching the feeder blow. And the syrup drop. I planted a few things at the pond to try to attract them. But no dice. Until today. Finally I got my first bird. And he was pretty active, coming and going right from the feeder. I expected that he would probably come in. But even when you get them to the feeder, they're not easy. These birds are fast, they're hard to focus on. Sometimes they're in really bad light. But I love them so much, you just make the best of it. The way they move, the way they fly. They don't have their ruby throats on display this time of year. But the emerald colors on their back are really beautiful. So you just keep giving it your best shot, get the footage you can, and it starts to get a little bit better. Who knew that the trick was lighting and proximity? I started to get a feel for where they go, back to their perch, tree to the feeder, but I decided, why don't we try the pond? Let's see if the birds are actually showing up. Lots of other residents were. We had spiders, The monarch caterpillars were loving the milkweed. And the bumblebees are all over the blue salvia. But then I saw them. I purposely designed the pond this way to be at eye level, shooting across about 15 feet to whatever would land on the other side. And this was my biggest success so far. Waiting for the banks of the pond to grow in will probably take till next year. So while I've had a lot of species show up, I haven't had that many great photo opportunities. But this hummingbird getting thick into the flowers is exactly what I was hoping for. And I much prefer watching him on natural plants rather than my feet. I will say, it's a lot harder to shoot him here though. There's always something obscuring, something in the way, tricky angles, tricky light most of the day. But as blissful as this was for me to watch, it's not all fun and games around the yard when you're this small. A bay-breasted warbler causing trouble in the trees. He was not a fan. This bird was in his area and he started to get pretty territorial. Warblers are small, but hummingbirds make them look like giants. These two had a bit of a standoff But eventually, the warbler won out on his perch. And other birds aren't the only problem. Wasps. And lots of them. The yellow jacket is a particular nuisance around this property. I spray twice a year, but I still have more than I can handle at any given time. Luckily this year, no stings but the hummingbird seems to be trying to dance around him as well. Now I haven't figured out why these birds are afraid of the wasps. I don't know if the wasps would attack. Seems to chase them off there. So our little hero bird is pretty wary at this point. Keeping an eye out. Of 
course, other hummingbirds are also very territorial. But overall, it's been a successful summer for most of the birds in the yard, including this little guy. He's got a lot to contend with, but he spends more time drinking than he does fighting. I wanted to make this short film as a reminder, don't give up. I've spent two years trying to film and photograph hummingbirds, and finally, I can't get rid of them. They're all over the place. I had four at one point today, and they were so close and tolerant of my presence, I actually used my wide-angle lens to get right up close. This has been a real feather in my cap this year. I'm excited to share the footage. I have a few stills here for you to take a look at the photographs I've taken, and I've made a special album on Flickr that I'll link below. I really love the quality you get out of Flickr. You can really see the details and the colors a lot better than any other photo, photo sharing app. So come check them out.